This is the introduction for uh, really what's going to be a series of lessons on painting summer trees in a landscape. Now, if you're a landscape painter, you'll probably want to continue with this. I guess if you're not a landscape painter, you'll be able to just turn off the lesson at this point and skip to something else. But many of us are landscape painters, and we paint in all seasons, uh, but especially in summertime. So that's what we're going to cover really in this series. But this is just the introduction. And I wanted to talk about in this video, not so much about painting. In fact, we're not going to do a painting project. I just wanted to talk about the fact, which you probably already know, and when I say it, you're going to go, duh. But it's something really to consider when you're painting trees in your landscape. And that is that you see them uh, in different places in the landscape. You'll see distant ones, and you'll see some that are a little farther away, not really in the distance, but in the middle distance, let's say, and then some that are close up. I've got a few samples of my paintings here to show you, uh, just to really reinforce that idea that we see trees differently depending on where they are in the landscape, and frankly, whether they're in a group or they're individual. So here's a painting I wanted to start with, and again, it shows very clearly that there's a line of trees back in here. You can see the tops of those trees. And then that tree line sort of comes down and actually stops. We see a little bit of, uh, it's actually not daylight, we're seeing that mountain that's behind right here between the edge of this tree and that tree that sits also way back in the background. So this one's by itself, but this is a group, and all we're seeing of that group is the tops because it's the rest of the trees, the rest of the foliage, and actually the trunks that are planted in the ground are uh, overlapped by these other trees that are closer to us. These trees, this one and actually this group over here, are in the middle distance. So we see them a little bit more clearly and there's a little bit more definition. And this one we see actually a light colored trunk. That's an important thing to remember. We'll talk about that. Um, this one we don't really see the trunk because again it disappears into the uh, very vibrant foliage and tall weeds actually that are in this field over here. We don't actually see the trunk. We only see uh, the foliage on the tree up here at the top. This group, we get to see mostly just foliage, this one particular trunk, little pieces of the trunk that are showing through some of the holes in those layers of foliage that are on that tree. And then, of course, this tree, which is closer to us, it's really in the foreground, it's, and it's an individual tree, it's standing by itself on the side of the road. Oh, we get to see its trunk and where its trunk starts to branch, uh, and then we get to see parts of the foliage. So it's a good example, really, of how we see trees in a landscape. And again, the different ways that we see and that they appear in a landscape. Same here. I won't go into quite as much detail, but it's exactly the same thing. We've got trees that are closer to us, trees that are farther away. In this case, we have no individuals, but we do have a small group. It looks like four or five trunks right there. So all of this foliage really is representing the five trees that are in that small group in the middle distance. Here's some other trees that are a little bit farther away, but again, a group of them. We get to see a little bit of their foliage on the top, and in a couple places, we get to see trunks. Way back here, we see what's really a tree line. You can see just a little bit of it there and a little bit over here to the left. And then on the right-hand side of the painting is actually a group of trees that run along the edge of a field and we're seeing it uh, from the edge. We're not seeing it like we're seeing these sort of lined up and we're looking at the fronts of them. We're looking down the side of this group. So we could see a couple trunks there and then mostly a lot of foliage. And then one last one. This is really a group of trees that sit on uh, along the edge of a road. And it's not real dense foliage. It's not deep woods. But we do still see... Uh, trees that are closer to us and we get a chance to see more detail in the foliage as well as a lot of dappled light in there. There's some places where we see uh, foliage actually back behind the trees because they're really backlit that are lit up so they've got that yellow green color on them and then parts of the foliage that are darker, really blue green color, they're darker because they're on the shady side of the tree and then we do get to see some trunks where they appear mostly down towards the ground 
but also a little bit of the trunks up in the foliage where they where it appears through the foliage itself and through the canopy. Uh, the important thing to notice on this one is that these trees, uh, the foliage really starts above the fairly high above the ground, so we get a chance to see not only the trunks but some of the weeds some of the ground plane and the light that's actually filtering through that, even on this uh, midsummer day with all of this bright foliage. And then back in here we have groups of trees. Back here on the left, they're dark because they're in the shade. And we see, again, mostly foliage, some of it lit at the top and then darker down here where it's not catching light. And a couple places where we get to see trunks. Same for this group of foliage, a group of trees that is on the other side. And back in here as well. So again, just to reinforce, in your landscape painting, there's a good chance you're going to see many trees. You're going to see them in groups and, and maybe in small groups as well as big groups. You might see some individual trees and you're going to see them farther away and closer to you. And the real point is that you have to handle those differently and that's what we're going to explore actually in this series. So uh, if you're interested beyond this, then just take a look at the series that's listed down below this video and uh, jump in and practice them one, one by one. And in fact, they build on each other. So by the end of the series, you will have built a little landscape painting as well with various kinds of trees um, in various places in that landscape. And you'll have a good example to work from uh, actually in your own work. So anyway, if you are really a good uh, landscape painter, you want to get good at those trees, go ahead and uh, jump into this series that I've got just down below.